The last bit today I want to tell you about is making mistakes and how that helps us to drive viral diversity. RNA synthesis, well, all nucleic acid synthesis, you probably know, is error prone. Um, and the problem with RNA based RNA synthesis is you can't correct your errors. DNA polymerases have proofreading mechanisms, but RNA dependent RNA polymerases do not. As a consequence, they make one mistake per thousand or 10,000 nucleotides incorporated. So a 10,000 base genome, viral genome, every time it's copied, you get one error in it. And remember, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of genomes produced in any one cell. So every time a virus is replicating in a cell, every genome that's produced has a mutation in it. Now you can control this. It turns out that evolution has selected for enzymes that make mistakes. Because you can make a single amino acid change in the polio RNA polymerase that makes it more accurate, make less mistakes. You can do tenfold better with this single amino acid change. And you know what? This virus is lousy at competing with wild type viruses. So in a cell culture experiment, if you put this uh, faithful polymerase virus in with wild type, it loses. So the, the, the moral is that viruses exist with a certain amount of error built into them so that they can compete. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to evolve. Without making mistakes, they can't evolve. So this will come back more in this course. We will talk a lot about uh, error-prone replication in terms of new and emerging viruses uh, later on. Another way that you can get variation is by recombination. We talked about reassortment a few lectures ago. Remember viruses with segmented genomes, when they co-infect the cell, they can mix up their genome segments and make new viruses with different combinations. Well, some RNA viruses can do what's called recombination. Uh, and this happens when the polymerase decides to change templates. So here we have an RNA molecule here in, in green. It's being copied by a polymerase. And you know, these, these reactions occur on the surface of membranes. So there are lots of RNA molecules in one very small area. And this polymerase suddenly is switching uh, to, the other, to another template entirely, the blue one here. So the result is a recombinant RNA molecule. I mean, this happens, for example, in, with poliovirus and many other RNA viruses. So another source uh, of diversity that occurs during RNA replication. And the last is very interesting because it's not templated. This is a source of diversity which is not based on a polymerase recognizing a sequence. Everything we've talked about so far, we have a template and we make a copy of it. There are some cases where uh, RNA is added in a non-templated fashion. And the example, one example I'm going to show you occurs in measles and mumps virus. These look very much like VSV. They have a long negative strand genome. They make uh, independent mRNAs early in infection. And there's one mRNA, it's called the PMRNA. Uh, some of those mRNAs have an extra base added during RNA synthesis. And that gives you two proteins. All right, so it's non-templated. And the mechanism is shown here. So now this is, we're looking very close to the negative strand RNA. The virus polymerase is making an mRNA here. It gets to a certain point, and then it slips back. The, temp, the product slips back one base. You can see uh, this G, which was uh, paired with the second of these two Cs, has now slipped back one. You get a little bulge here, and then the polymerase resumes. So you have an extra G added. It's a non-templated G. And this happens very specifically in this PMRNA at this site. It's called the editing site. And it's probably controlled by a stem loop structure, which is right near here. The pol polymerase probably bumps into it and pauses, and then the product slips back. The result is uh, the mRNA where you've got the extra G, you make a different protein downstream of that extra G. So you have two different proteins. You have a protein made from the normal, non-edited mRNA, and you have a protein made from the edited mRNA. So they're two different products. So this happens about 10% of the time. It's reproducible. It's another way of expanding the coding capacity of a genome. One more example of this, which is pretty neat, because it really controls how, whether a virus can infect a cell or not. And this happens with Ebola virus. So remember, we talked about these last time. Uh, these are these filamentous 
enveloped viruses which are studded with glycoproteins. All these interesting molecules here are glycoproteins. And remember, these are needed for the virus to attach to cells and fuse and all of that. The mRNA that encodes the glycoprotein. So these are negative strand viruses. They have a long negative strand genome. They make subgenomic mRNAs, very much like measles and VSV, like we've been talking about. The normal mRNA made for the glycoprotein produces a secreted protein. So in other words, it, it's short. It, it has a termination codon here. And so the protein made doesn't have the transmembrane domain, so it just gets secreted out of the cell. In order to make a glycoprotein that's membrane bound, which can be incorporated uh, into virus particles, you have to have editing within the glycoprotein gene. So a, a, a non-templated base is added uh, about 10% of the time, and that gives rise to a, a longer protein, which has a transmembrane domain and can be embedded in the <coughs> membrane. So here's a really neat example of where you absolutely have to have editing to have a virus. Otherwise, these virus particles would not, would not exist. They wouldn't have glycoproteins on them. Now, in the case of the measles editing, that's also essential because if you get rid of the editing site, uh, you, you don't get infectivity for other reasons. But here, uh, another example. There aren't too many of these, but they do exist. They also exist in uh, other organisms as well. So another example of uh, variation at the RNA level. <coughs> 